Here we are on part four on my series on muscles. And now we're gonna talk about the structure of a myofibril. So we've been slowly working our way in, right? So now we're gonna look at the part of the muscle cell that is responsible for a muscle contraction in striated cells. So we have these myofilaments, right, inside the myofibril. And they're made up of these contractile proteins. And of course, these contractile proteins generate tension. They're also comprised of regulatory proteins. These regulatory proteins, they dictate when a fiber can contract, okay? So of course we can control when they can contract and when they don't, and these regulatory proteins are involved with that. And we also have structural proteins, and these help maintain a proper myofilament arrangement that you need for stability because these things are all in parallel and you don't want them to get out of, out of order or else a muscle won't function correctly. Now, when it comes to the contractile proteins, there are three types of these myofilaments. We've got the thick filament, the thin filament, and the elastic filament. Let's take a closer look. A thick filament, this is made up of myosin, okay? This is a contractile protein and it has a globular heads at the other at the ends, and they're linked by these intertwining tails. Okay, so here it is. If you see there, there's an individual thick filament, just one part with a tail and the head. So you've got a head, this is part of the globular protein, and it's also got a hinge-like neck. Hinged neck, that tells you it can move, actually like that. And then it's got a long tail. And those long tails, those are what intertwine together to form that uh, thick part that doesn't have those heads that you see above it. And of course, the myosin head has an active site. This is very important because that active site binds to an actin filament. Hmm. We got a hinge neck that can move back and forth, right? Binding to filaments. These things slide past each other. We're starting to build a story here, I think. Okay, we got thick filaments, thin filaments. Thin filaments are made up of actin, okay, actin filaments. Same actin you have as part of your um, cytoskeleton. So actin are these, you got these actin subunits and you stick them together and um, they form these long strings. And the actin filaments are made up of actin, tripomyosin, and troponin. Okay, so like I said, these subunits, they string together like beads on a necklace and forms these intertwining strands that are actually very strong. And each of those actin subunits also has an active site, okay? Now that active site, that's where the myosin heads are going to bind to the actin, okay? This is gonna allow some sliding here, some movement. Now this, of course, is regulated by two proteins called troponin and tropomyosin, okay? These help control uh, when a muscle contraction is turned on and off. So tropomyosin is a regulatory protein. It twists around the actin, okay? And what it does is it actually covers up the active site. So if you're covering up the active site, guess what? You can't have your myosin heads bind to it. You don't have a muscle contraction. So the next question is, how do you remove the tropomyosin off the active site? And of course, this is the role of troponin. It holds the tropomyosin in place and assists with turning on and off the contractions. So somehow, we have a muscle contraction, we're gonna move those tropomyosin off the active sites with the action of troponin by turning it off. So when we get to the how the muscle actually contracts with the signal, we will discuss that further. Okay, so we've got thin filaments, thick filaments, now we have elastic filaments, and one of them is called Titan. And Titan gets its name because it's enormous. And in fact, it's one of the largest of all the proteins we've ever seen. And it connects to a place called the Z-line, which I'm about to get to, and it runs to the core of a thick filament, okay? And this resists some excessive stretching of the muscle. Okay, so we've got our myofibril, okay? That's the actual long thing, the long organelle running through the length of a cell. And when it contracts, 
causes the cell to contract. Now there's units within these myofibrils called the sarcomere. And this is the smallest functional unit of a striated muscle. And like I said, this is part of the myofibril. It's one small part. And the sarcomere, if you notice, it's got these dark bands and light bands. So let's take a closer look at the sarcomere. Light bands. That is where you only find uh, thin filaments. That makes sense. Thin filaments allow more light to go through. So if you're looking at a muscle fiber, specifically a myofibril under a light microscope, you see dark and light bands. Light bands only have the light filament, only have the thin filaments, allow more light through. In contrast, dark bands, um, they have both thick and thin filaments. They allow less of the um, light to go through. Now specifically, let's break this down a little bit more. The I band, isotropic, means it's unchanging basically. So these are made only of thin filaments, okay? And the way I remember this is light, I, I band, but like I said, the name comes from isotropic. Now those um, thin filaments are connected to the Z disc, which is found in the middle of an I band. A sarcomere actually goes from one Z disc to the next because the Z disc is found in the middle of the I band that the thin filaments and elastic filaments also attack, attach to it. So it forms an anchor, right? Attaching these filaments. So you can see that if you're sliding past each other, you can start pulling those Z disc closer to each other, hmm, getting some contraction here, right? Building up the story. And of course, uh, not only does Z disc attach the thin filaments, they also attach the elastic filaments as well. Also, the Z disc, which are made up of these you know, structural proteins, they also help connect the myofibrils to each other across the entire diameter of a muscle fiber. Okay, so once again, this is helping add stability to our muscle cells. Now you'll also notice there's an A band. This is the dark band. This is the zone of overlap. This is where you get both the actin filaments and the myosin filaments overlapping and this is where you get your this is where you get your zone of tension from and this is also a band for anisotropic because this is where you're getting the change now in the h zone this is where you only get thick filaments i mean it comes from the german word for lighter because as you have your your a band which is darker right right in the middle of your a band is the h zone which is a little bit lighter like i said it only has thick filaments Right in the middle of the H zone is the M line. M just stands for middle. In fact, it comes from the German word metal, which means middle. And this is the center of the sarcomere. And this helps hold myosin in place so it doesn't move around. And it's also an anchoring point for the elastic filaments. That means the elastic filaments are both anchored at the Z disc and at the M line. Now, during the contraction, the sarcomere shortens. The I band and the H zone narrows, but the A band remains basically unchanged. Okay, so how do you get these sarcomeres to shorten? How does that happen? Well, the myosin heads attach to the actin filaments. Remember, they both have the active sites, right? Those are your points of, uh, of attachment. And what happens is those, uh, the myosin heads will, will move and pull the uh, actin past them all right, so they slide past each other toward the M line, okay? And that brings the Z disc closer together. When the Z disc come closer together, the sarcomere shortens. And you do this across the entire myofibril, okay? This whole thing starts to shorten. And that's how you get a contraction. And then together, this is called the sliding filament theory. Other people call it the sliding filament mechanism. And importantly here with this is that none of the filaments are actually shorting, right? They're not shortening at all. It's just that the filaments are sliding past each other. So stay tuned for part five, because that's where we're going to talk about how the sarcomere actually shortens based on a signal from your motor neuron. And that's where we're going to start talking about T-tubules and the cisternae, right? Calcium ions 
and uh, how that's going to affect the troponin, the tropomyosin, and the role of ATP. So that will be in my next lecture. So that's where we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of how it actually works. Okay, so stay tuned until next time. Stay curious.